Just think a claim by the standard deviation. We are going to conduct a formal hypothesis test of a claim made about population standard deviation sigma for variance sigma squared, in which case the chi-square distribution is used in the case of a single variance or standard deviation. In this case, the test is statistic. Chi squared is n minus 1 s squared over sigma squared. The notation is very straightforward. n is again sample size, degrees of freedom is n minus 1. s is the sample standard deviation, sigma is the population one. s squared sample variance, sigma squared is the population variance. In this case, the p-value method, the critical value method, and the confidence interval method are all equivalent. However, it's important to see that due to limitation of a table, using those may not be easy, but we can do it by knowledge. The requirement, the sample is simple, random sample. The population has a normal distribution, high square distribution. It is not symmetric. It is skewed to the right. It starts from zero, and it goes indefinitely on the right side. There is some work that you can find it on the internet. I've put the uh, URL, the link. Uh, you can check it out if it works. Sometimes I've seen it that it doesn't work as properly. Uh, and let me know. Uh, that uh, should can help you find the chi-square values. Or simply use the table. If you use the table, you need the area to the right. Degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1. All right. So all values of chi-squares are non-negative and the distribution is not symmetric. There is a different chi-square distribution for each number of degrees of freedom. The critical values are found in chi-square table using degrees of freedom and minus one. So in chi-square table, each critical value of chi-square in the body of the table corresponds to an area given in the top row of the table and each area in that top row is a cumulative area to the right. Can't emphasize this enough, you will remember that table, okay? Assumptions for the chi-square test for variance or standard deviation. One, the sample must be randomly selected from the population. Two, the population must be normally distributed for the variable under study. And three, the observations must be independent of one another. Let's just refresh everyone's memory as far as the chi-square is concerned. All right, so find the critical chi-square value uh, for 15 degrees of freedom. So df is given class. We don't need to subtract one, and that's important for you to pay attention to. df is 15, and alpha is 0.05, and we are dealing with the right tail test. So that means this. So look at the drawing. So the area to the right is 0.05. All you have to do, go to the table. Degrees of freedom is 15, and area to the right is 0.05. Very straightforward. Here's the table. You have 15, you have the area of 0.05, because remember the area to the right is what we need to do the math, and chi squared becomes 24.996. Again, there is a place that you can program chi-square, chi-inverse into a TI calculator. I am giving you the program. I'm giving you the YouTube. You can look it up. I've seen that most of the time this works. Sometimes it doesn't. But uh, try this class, okay? Uh, if you're uh, interested in using technology, that's fine. And so... It is a long process, honestly. For a simple case like that, it is much easier to look up the table. Okay, so this is how you look it up. In the second case, the degrees of freedom is again given. It's 10, alpha is 0.05, but this time it's left tail. Therefore, the area to the right is 0.95. And therefore, if you want to do the reading, okay, area to the right is 0.95. If you want to do the reading, take a look. You have to look at the area, which is 0.95. I can't emphasize this enough. This is because of the way the table works. So the answer is 3.940. 3.940. Here's the next one. 
we're going to find the critical chi-square value of 22 degrees. Again, degrees of freedom is given. You don't have to subtract one. So that's fine. That means you're looking at this one. It's a two-tailed test. Alpha is 0.05. So you draw the graph. 0.95 smack in between. 0.05 divided by 2, which means 0 0.025 on each side. Now, what do we need? We need degrees of freedom, which is 22. Fine. How do we arrive at the answer for chi squared of the left and chi squared of the right? We need the area to the right. Now, chi squared of the right, the area to the right is 0 0.025. It's a very obvious class. But what about the chi squared of the left? is one minus that everything all is almost to the right of that so one minus 0 0.025 so degrees of freedom is 22 that's what you're looking at area is 0 0.025 for chi squared of the right and 0.975 for chi squared of the left again i want to make sure you see how we arrive at it okay so you need the area to the right so four the case of chi squared of the left, the area to the right is 0 0.95 plus 0 0.025, which is 0 0.975. In other words, add this number and add this number, or simply put subtract this number from what? Okay, 1 minus 0 0.025, that would be the fastest. 1 minus 0 0.025, which gives you 0.9. Okay, so you go to the top, you look at 0.975, that's one of them. Okay, and you look at 0.025, that's another one. The numbers in front of 22, those are the numbers you're looking for. This is the chi squared of the right, this is the chi squared of the left, and those are the numbers. An instructor wishes to see whether the variation in scores of the 23 students in her class is less than the variance of the population. The variance of the class is 198. Is there enough evidence to support the claim that the variation of the students is less than the population variance? Sigma squared equals 225 at alpha equals 0 0.05. Assume that the scores are normally distributed. So let's see what's given. The score of 23 students. And in her class is less than the variance of the population. The variance of the class is 198. So 198, the variance of the class, the variance of, the variance of 23 subjects. And so that's S squared. Sigma squared is 225, alpha is 0.05. And we are going to do the test statistic. So what do we do? H0. Sigma squared equals 225. But what is H1? So what are we checking? Is there enough evidence to support the claim that the variation of the student is less than, and that is the claim. The next one is using the top formula to find the test statistic. Everything is given, N is given, S squared is given, sigma squared is given. By the way, most of the time, S and sigma are given, so you square. So you calculate that by simply putting in and it gives you the number a couple of decimals will do the job so the next step is to find the critical value okay which comes from the choice of alpha alpha is 0 0.05 degrees of freedom is n minus 1 which is 22 okay and we use the table okay and we've seen that you should have no problem with that. In fact, even the previous page has the number under 22. Remember that? So we get this, and now it's a matter of comparison. So when you compare step two and three, when you compare the location of this statistic and the critical value, it's to the right of it. And this is a left tail test, so that it's way into the non rejection region. So the process repeats itself just the way we have learned it before. It works out exactly in the same manner as. So if we know the test of hypothesis, we see the steps, 
The thing that is going to change is really step two, calculation of test statistic. The process is identical for the rest of it. Step one, you write H0 and H1. Step three, critical value from the choice of alpha. Step four, decision making. What about step two? You need a formulation. And you need to know what formula you're using. Are you using the Z, the T, the chi squared formula, which one? Okay? And that's why it's important to read and understand and distinguish. And so, according to this, if it's in way, way into the non-rejection region, fail to reject or do not reject H0. So if you're not rejecting H0, in essence, you're eject, rejecting H1. Rejection of H1 means the claim must be false. So I hope you see again how we get to the decision. Don't reject H0. I want to make sure everybody understands this is the one that comes from our calculation. Calculation gives us only this one. The rest, now we go back to step one, look for the location of a claim and answer it. So part B, part B, you go back to step one and you find the location of the claim, you answer it. Part C, always there is or there is not sufficient evidence to support it. And then you do the writing for the claim. Part A is from the calculation. Comparison of two and three. Part B comes from step one. Locate claim, figure out which one is which and what's your answer. Part C, you just write accordingly. All right, so having said that, here is using TI. You can go to a second variables, chi squared CDA, and you put three entries, the left bound, right bound, and so forth. So the lower bound, and uh, that can give you the uh, chi squared 0.37994. Nine, what does it mean? This is your p-value. If you go this route, you're calculating the p-value. Chi squared CDF. And what do you put as your upper value? Is your test statistic. Why upper? Because the left tail test. I want you to understand it's not always upper. If it's a right tail test, that would be your lower. And upper becomes like a large number, a thousand or ten thousand. So it's important to see how we are arriving at this. According to the p-value, this is way larger than alpha and therefore we get to the same result. So this, this will give you the same result of part A of the decision, and then you continue writing. A researcher wishes to test the claim that the variance of the nicotine content of a cigarette manufacturer is 0.644. Nicotine content is measured in milligrams and assumed that it is normally distributed. A sample of 20 cigarettes has a standard deviation of 1 milligram. At alpha is equal to 0 0.05, test the claim that the variance of the nicotine content of its cigarettes is 0.644. So let's see what's given. We are dealing with a normal distribution. And we are testing the claim that the variance is 0.644. So this is sigma squared. And we are checking that to be equal to that, okay? So that is the claim, that is sigma squared equal to that, okay? That is H0, and because we are checking that, it becomes a two-tailed test, and it's not equal, becomes H1. In any event, so what do we do to check that? We come up with 20 samples, that's N. And the standard deviation for the N is 1, so that's S, alpha is 0.05. And so sigma squared, n is 20, sigma squared is 0.644, s is 1, alpha is 0.05. So I explained how we test the claim. Test the claim that the variance of the nicotine content of its cigarette is equal to, that means H0, sigma squared is equal to 0.644. That's the claim. And H1, sigma squared is not equal to 0.644. And what happens, it makes it a two-tailed test. Test statistic uses the top formula. We calculate the chi-squared equals n minus 1 s squared over sigma squared. Everything is given up. What I want you to pay attention to, 
S is 1 and 1 squared happened to be 1 also. But just so we don't make a mistake, when I put it down, I don't put 1, I put 1 squared. Because if it's anything other than 1, then when you square it, it gives you a different answer. So make sure you square that because S squared is not given. It is only S that is given. And so you plug in, you calculate, and you end up with the form. And so what happens next, you need the critical end. Alpha is given as 0 0.05. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1, 20 minus 1 or 19. What about the critical value? There are two of them. There are two critical values. Why is that? Because it's a two-take test. Alpha is 0 0.05. Degrees of freedom is 19. You look up the table. You end up with those numbers, 8.907 as chi-squared of the left. This is called chi-squared of the left. And this is... 32.852 is chi squared of the right. And so the test statistic is in between non-rejection region. So with that being the case, you don't reject H0. If you don't reject H0, so that is the decision that you are going to make when it comes to this question as your part A. That's all it does. Your calculation gives you part A. Do not reject or fail to reject H0. Now you go back to step one and look at the location of a claim. Claim is sitting to H0. If you're not rejecting H0, you're not rejecting the claim. The claim is therefore true. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. And you do the writing. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the variance of the nicotine content of its cigarettes is 0 0.644. Why do we test a claim about the standard deviation of variance? The common goal in business and industry is to improve the quality of goods or services by reducing variation. Quality control engineers want to ensure that a product has an acceptable meaning, but they also want to produce items of consistent quality so that there will be few defects. If weights of coins have a specified mean but too much variation, some will have weights that are too low or too high so that vending machines will not work correctly, unlike the stellar performance that they now provide. This is an example that why you want to test that and we are interested in having proper standard deviation. Here's the next example. A simple random sample of 37 weights of post-1983 pennies has a mean of 2.49910 grams and a standard deviation of 0.01648 grams. U.S. Mint specifications require that pennies be manufactured so that the mean weight is 2.5 grams. Use a 0 0.05 significance level to test the claim that the population of weights has a standard deviation less than the specification of 0 0.0230 grams. The first thing is to read and reread and reread until we understand what's given. So the very first number, 37. What is that? Can anybody tell us what's 37? 10. Here. And the next number is 2.49910 grams. What is that? It pertains to those 37. It's the H. I'm sorry, one more time. What was it? The H value. H? What is the H value? No. The, the X bar? X bar. It's the mean. When it's the mean, it's either X bar or mu. What is the next one? S. Very good. That's the standard deviation, but it pertains to those subjects, 37. What is 2.5? Mu. Mu, because it's supposed to be that for all, for the population. This is mu. Significance level, obviously, alpha. Finally, I see this number. What is that? We're testing the claim that the population of weights has a standard deviation less than sigma. this. So this must be sigma. It's a simple random sample, short S or S. N is 37. X bar is 2.4991 grams. S is 0 0.01648 grams. Why is that? Because it pertains to those 37 samples. H0 and H1. We want to check that the standard deviation is less than that. That's the left-hand test. So sigma is 0 0.023. 
and of course with the units grams h1 so sigma is less than that and it makes it a left tail test and that is also the claim so in your very first step you have a lot of information for your reader so right away we recognize because we are dealing with sigma what do we do our test statistic must be pi squared why is that we are dealing with sigma and we are dealing with one population we are comparing the sigma or sigma squared in this case sigma with a number that means you use chi squared so you use the top right formula plug in and it gives you the answer 18.483 that is your test statistic what is it equal to 18.483 you are going to come up with the critical value this is a left tail test alpha is 0 0.05 degrees of freedom is n minus 1 or 36 and the total area to the right is 1 minus 0 0.05 or 0 0.95 for the sake of reading table doesn't give you an answer so it's between those two numbers because the degrees of freedom is not there i'll show you in a moment and uh, technology gives you obviously a number in between because it can in a matter of comparison as you can see even though we don't have the answer we know for sure the critical value is larger than 18.492 even that one is larger than test statistic that means it puts us in the rejection region. so take a look at this your test statistic is 18.483 even if you go with the table even if you use this one rather than this one using 18.493 it is still less than that so no matter what you are going to reject h0 so because you are rejecting h0 what do you do you go back to step one and take a look at the location your claim if you are rejecting h0 loosely put you are accepting h1 and therefore the claim becomes true and so there is sufficient evidence to support the claim da, 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 da. you start writing the whole thing as you would so we are looking at the area to the right uh, which is 0 0.95 so I'm looking at the area to be 0 0.95, okay, area to the right. And the degrees of freedom is, look at this number 30, okay, look at this number 40. So the degrees of freedom is missing. 36 is not there. So I don't have the answer, but look at this one. According to the table, the answer is between these two values 18.493 and 26.509 this is how you look up a table and this is why we say it's a limited table listed below are the heights in centimeters for the simple random sample of female supermodels use a 0.01 significance level to test the claim that supermodels have heights with a standard deviation that is less than uh, sigma equals 7.5 centimeters for the population of women. Does it appear that heights of supermodels vary less than heights of women from the population? Assume normal distribution. We are given the information in the form of a data rather than statistics, so we have to figure it out on our own. This is a sample. We are assuming normal distribution. Sigma is given as uh, 7.5, and there are 16 pieces of data. So that's given. Uh, you have to put it into a technology because there are 16 pieces it takes a little bit of a time if you want to calculate what if you look at the top right formula everything is there the only missing is s you have to calculate that i'm going to assume you put it into calculator a technology and you come up with s sigma 7.5 centimeters does it appear that heights of supermodels vary less which means sigma is less than 7.5 centimeters and that is the claim that's a left tail test so with that being the case we use the top right formula to come up with the answer we just plug in and it gives us the answer and we end up with 0 
907 of the X. So the test statistic results in 0.907. What about the critical value? Critical value comes from the choice of alpha. Alpha is 0.01. That means since it's a left tail test, we need the area to the right, one minus that for the sake of reading from the table. So the area to the right is 0.99. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1 is 15, and we get 5.229. With that being the case, where is this 0.907? This is way into the rejection region, is to the left of 5.229, as you can see from the graph. And therefore, you reject H0. The very first part of the decision, part A, is to reject H0. If you reject H0, and you go back to the very first step and figure out where the claim goes. The claim belongs to H1. You are rejecting H0. That means you loosely put accepting H1. Therefore, the claim is true. So therefore, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. Da, 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 you do the value. So reject H0. The claim is true, therefore. All of this calculation is about the very first part. And then you go to the first step to figure out where the claim is and answer it. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that female supermodels have heights with a standard deviation that is less than 7.5 centimeters for the population of Earth. Let's go to the next one. If we want to do this by the p value, and again it's limited, in case the table doesn't have what you're looking for. Remember what the p-value is. If I go back to the previous page, the uh, test statistic was calculated as 0 0.907. So the area to the left of 0 0.907 is your answer, okay? By the way, you can check the normality. This is all using technology, okay? So if we go with the technology, look at the p-value from technology, the p-value is less than 0 0.0001, which is clearly less than alpha of 0 0.01. And therefore, you get the same decision for part A. Reject H0. And then you write the rest of them accordingly. So as far as the table is concerned, N is 16, which means decrease of freedom is 15. And you want to see if you can figure out the area to the left of that, 0.907. So the limitation is there. Let me see if I can show you the table again. So the degrees of freedom is 15. This is what you're looking for. N minus 1. Area to the right. Remember, alpha is 0.01. So if you look at the area was of 0.99 and 0.995 at top. It gives you the area in between, and the p-value is less than 0.01. Okay, look at all these numbers, okay? It doesn't have the number we want. Let me write the test statistic. What was the test statistic? Test statistic was chi-squared of 0. 907. So as you look at the numbers, the numbers get larger and larger to the right. So the number we want is not there, but clearly is to the left of the last number on the left, which is 4.601. And I want you to look at the area at top. The area at top is 0.995. What is that area? To the right of it. So what you want is the area to the left of it, which becomes the alpha. So what is the p-value less than, according to the table, p-value, according to the table, take a look at the number at top, is less than the top number minus 1. And this is 0 0.005. So we don't know the p-value, but we know for sure it's less than 0 0.005. So we get to the same result as we did when we did the critical value, the traditional method, and we rejected H0. Let's, let's go to the last part of this question. So basically, for a case like this, it is expected that you 
you know, be comfortable with technology. If we were to use the confidence interval, remember the test is a left tail test with the alpha of 0.01. This is what we have discussed. So if alpha is 0.01, confidence level of 98%, if 0.01 is a one tail test, it doesn't matter left or right, then it, it corresponds to 98% confidence level. If it's a two tail test, then it's 99% confidence level. So with that being the case, you want a 98%. So with that being the case, we just use the formula n minus one s squared over chi squared of the right, less than sigma squared, n minus one s squared over chi squared of the left. This is the formula we've seen in the previous chapter when we deal with the confidence interval. So we have 98% in between because this was 1%. We put another 1% on the right. Okay, to make it 98% in between. So you need to look up the chi squared of the left here, chi squared of the right, or degrees of freedom of n minus 1 or 15, and you use them uh, accordingly. With that being the case, remember we calculated the s in the very first page that we encountered this question. That's why s is 1.84399. So now plug in. That's all you have to do, plug in. Now chi squared of the left and right are looked up from the table. I highly recommend you do that on your own. You'll be able to do that. You should have no problem with that. Now this is the sigma squared. And remember what happens to sigma. Sigma, you just take a root. It's between the two. All right. Take a root between 1.2915 and 3.1283. With this confidence interval, we can support the claim that sigma is less than 7.5. Why is that? Because all values of the confidence interval are less than 7.5. In other words, both numbers, the number on the left as well as the number on the right, and this is what we are comparing it to. Both of them are less than 7.5.